So this is an APC Smart UPS 1500 that I recently bought off of eBay used for about $120. So I'd never owned a UPS before, is kind of why I bought this. Um, and I want to have a network attached storage set up in my house by the end of this year. And I figured before I have that, I should probably have a UPS to make sure that just in case there's any power outages or brownouts or anything that my data remains safe. So in the meantime, I'm going to try to get this back up to speed, plug my networking equipment into it, just kind of test it out for the next couple of months. Uh, but this is actually an older model. This is an SMT 1500 from, I believe, around 2015. So not too old, but also not their top of the line equipment these days. Uh, so it's important to note that this is an SMT 1500 and not a 1500C. So with the C models, that's their cloud-first platform. Um, so I'll show you the back of this in a second here, but all of their UPSs seem to offer some sort of console port as well as a USB port so that you can do monitoring. Um, but their cloud models have a Ethernet jack specifically just for interfacing with their cloud platform. Um, but as you'll see with this one, it has the ability to just plug into your LAN and be accessed through your LAN. So I thought that that was a big plus. And even if it's a little bit older, I'd rather have more functionality than being locked into some weird service. So I bought this as used working, but has no batteries. And when I received it, it actually does have the original batteries from 2015. But when I powered this thing on, it says, please insert batteries as though they're not there. They're like completely dead shorted. So my plan today is that I've ordered some replacement batteries. I'm going to rewire, or should I say, I'm going to take the wiring off the old batteries, put it on the new batteries so that they slot right in. And then I'm going to power this thing up and hopefully it just kind of chugs on as though nothing ever happened. So I'll do that in a second, but first let me show you guys the back of this thing. So this is the back of the unit here, but before I go into what we're actually looking at, you're probably asking, why did I buy a $120 used UPS that needs new batteries instead of a brand new UPS for about the same price that has working batteries? So what that really comes down to is that there's several different lines of UPSs, uh, specifically for APC, their smart UPS line is a lot more expensive than something like their back UPS line. So the, the smart line, this unit, brand new, is probably somewhere around $600, $700, whereas the, the back UPS, that is around $100 to $200, depending on the model that you get. So why did I pick this one? Uh, essentially, it comes down to the features that it has. So one area that this smart UPS shines in is that it has a pure sine wave inverter. So some of the more facsimile sine wave converters, more like a sawtooth instead of a pure sine wave, uh, have been known to cause issues with different electronics. So when in doubt, you want to go pure sine wave if you can. Um, and these UPSs are also line interactive, which basically means that the DC to AC inverter is in line with the mains power. So you only have a four millisecond uh, response time to cutting over to battery power. Whereas the uh, back UPS line, they have two separate circuits essentially. So that can be up to 10 milliseconds of power loss um, before there's a full cut over. So with a lot of electronics, that's also not a problem. Uh, for what I've heard, if you have something like computers that have these beefier power supplies, it's hardly ever an issue. But if you're powering smaller electronics or things with linear power supplies, you might have an issue with that time delay. So that's another reason why I opted to go with this unit. Um, and then for one more reason, those back UPS uh, models usually only have four outlets that will run off a of battery while the other four run off of mains. So if we look at the bottom of this unit here, you can see we have this group of four outlets on the right and four on the left. Now all eight of these can be powered off the battery, but group one labeled such over here on the right side, 
these are actually programmable outlets. So you can do some different behaviors for switching them on and off, which I thought was a really interesting feature. So otherwise back here, we have this overload protection, um, sort of like a button or, or more of like a reset button so that you can reset it if there's an overload state. This over here is the battery connector. So you can actually have like a hard disconnect for the batteries, which is very useful if you're swapping them out. Um, at the top left here, we have the USB port as well as the UPS monitoring port, which is actually a serial connection with an RJ45 jack. As I mentioned before, those are still both pretty standard um, on these APC UPSs from what I understand. But the weird, or should I say the fun thing that I like about this one is that it comes with an expansion port and this one already had a populated AP9631 network management card here. So we have some additional USB ports. We have a console port that looks like it might be a 2.1, 2.5 millimeter uh, audio connector. We have two universal IO ports, which I've heard are for like temperature and humidity sensors. And then we have this network port, this 10100 network port. So we can plug this into the LAN and then interface it with it through the LAN and not just have to be tethered via USB or UPS monitoring um, with a serial connection. So that was another big selling point behind getting this specific UPS is that I'm not locked into any of the cloud stuff, but I could also just plug this into the LAN and access it that way if I wanted to. So now that we've covered the back, I'm going to flip this back around again, and then we'll get inside and I'll show you how you can take out the existing batteries. All right, so back around the front, these are actually pretty easy to get into. Um, if you take the cover here, this sort of face, on the left and right at the top, there's these two little indents here, which you can use to pull the front down. So I've already loosened this because it does take a little bit of force, but essentially you can put your fingers here in the indents and pull down and then this pops off. But notice there is a ribbon cable back here. So you can just flip this up, put it on the top, and then you'll see that there's this metal plate with these two screw holes. Um, so they're slotted for Phillips as well as a flathead, it looks like, so you could use either. Um, so I just have this multi-tool here and I will quickly try to take these out. But yeah, what you'll see when we get it open is that they actually constructed the battery pack by taking these two 12 volt DC, of course, um, I believe 17 or 18 hour um, amp hour batteries and chaining them together in series so that they create one sort of 24 volt battery of batteries. So just finishing up the last screw. All right, that's out. And then this metal part actually bends down and then comes out just like that. So you can see here, there's two batteries. And then if I stick my fingers in here, slide them out a bit. You can see that they're connected here in the back. So I want to just push this back in for right now. But yeah, I'll reset up uh, back on the floor here and I'll show you how we're going to take these apart. And then I'll show you my replacement batteries that we're going to move some of the hardware on these old ones onto um, and put it all back together. Okay, so now we'll actually go about replacing the batteries. So you can see here I've pulled the battery pack out. Um, it's just two batteries stuck together. And these are the replacement batteries that I'm going to be using. So these are ECI power, um, AGM, 12 volt, 18 amp hour batteries. So these are perfect replacements here. So this original battery has these covers over the terminals. So we can just rip those off. You can see there's uh, this blue box over here attached to these terminals. I believe that's a fuse. And then over here is where the connector is um, fastened that actually connects it up to the UPS. 
So we'll go ahead and we'll remove these. I'm going to start on the left side here with the fuse, um, just because this is currently open. So if I was trying to remove this and accidentally bridge something, you never want to short out um, a battery. So starting with this side here. And then we can see here, so this looks like we can get that to focus, maybe not. That's a 100 amp fuse here. Still looks like it's intact. Uh, but now I can go ahead and work on this other side. Okay. So we have all the connectors separated here. So if we just look at this, okay, so red and black, black and red. If I move this out of the way. Essentially, I want to put them together like this. Let's take these uh, plastic terminal housings off here. Move these out of the way. So we're going to basically reconnect this um, in the reverse order. So I'm going to start with this connector and then do the fuse. And of course we have uh, a visitor over here. So it's also important to note that I'm only making these finger tight right now. Um, so when we actually get everything threaded, then I plan on going back around and tightening everything up just so that we can make sure that we have these two batteries aligned together. Because there's nothing worse than having everything hooked up and then you're trying to put the last screw on and you can't get everything to sort of come together. All right, that's pretty good. Um, so as you can see, it's still kind of wiggly. Um, so off camera, I'm going to tighten this down and then find some sort of cellophane tape or packing tape to wrap around these to make sure that they're really pushed together. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take care of that, uh, plug it back in, and then we can try to boot up this UPS and see what happens. Okay, so I have the UPS installed now. We're a couple of days later. Um, so it's sitting on my basement floor here. You can see it's on a cinder block just to make sure that it doesn't uh, get affected by any moisture coming in. Um, something a little curious, you can see here, so the battery is 100% charged. We have a load of 0%. So from what I understand, if the load on here is less than about 10%, um, it can't really display it properly at all times. It's a sort of a known quirk with these models. Um, so if I put something in there with a much more demanding load, um, it'll spike up um, and be pretty accurate from as far as I could tell. But with my network gear on here, so I have switches, router, um, very small form factor PC, some Raspberry Pis, and access point. Um, it's utilizing very little power, so that's why we're reading zero here. Um, so I did do a self-test, and it works. I did a calibration, which I would do for you again, but it takes a little while. For that, you need a guaranteed load over 10%, so I hooked it up to the AS5300 over here, which gave me about 25%, and that worked really well. Um, but yeah, we have this here. 
it's hooked up, it's ready to go. So let me give you a little demo where I actually just unplug it from the wall and I'll show you what it does. So we can see here, so here's the networking stuff that I was telling you about. I have it plugged into the wall up here. So if I pull this out, um, we should see these lights remain on as it goes to battery backup and you should hear a little bit of a beep coming in. So let me get this all in frame. So lights are still on, you hear the beep. So we're gonna see a little bit of odd behavior down here. So now we see the load start to come up um, and you'll notice the battery is going down um, pretty quickly. So yeah, you can kind of watch it in real time. So what I've noticed with these low loads is the battery goes down um, to about like 70%. And I don't think it's actually going down to 70%. I think it's trying to figure out the capacity based on the load because all of a sudden it senses a load that it didn't sense before. So what we'll see is it'll go down to in the 70s and then it'll slowly creep back up to something that's a little more realistic. So if we just hold on a little bit longer here, see if we can capture it actually doing this. And I apologize for you guys being on shaky cam here um, with a little handheld tripod. So 76%. So this should be about the point it starts to creep back up. Let's see if it goes a little bit lower or not. Well, anyway, it's not getting lower than that. But let me go through the menus here. So if I go into status, that's probably a good one. So on battery, on battery, 5%, 50 watts, 144 volt amps, Battery charge state 76, so it's staying there. So runtime is about two and a half hours at this usage. Yeah, so what I've seen before is that, yep, there we go. Okay, so it, it goes into the 70s, and then it's like, oh, wait, we're, we're not really losing that much power that fast. And this is still unplugged, so it's slowly sort of kind of figuring out the actual battery capacity. So this should continue to go up. Um, but for the meantime, let me plug this back in, um, just cause I don't want to wear down the batteries too much without having to do it, but that's pretty good. I mean, we're running my entire network, um, plus one of these little small form factor PCs, some raspberry Pis and stuff. And it says we got two and a half hours of runtime. So even not having, um, the Synology or network attached storage or whatever I'm going to get here, we are in an area that gets affected by hurricanes, which can lead to some power outages or flickers. Um, so it's really good that I have that much um, capacity that the network will still keep going, keep all everything alive, keep the access point going um, for quite a while. It's pretty cool. So if I go back down here now, yeah, you'll see we have the green indicator back up. It doesn't want to register the load anymore and the battery is going to slowly start charging back up. So pretty cool. Very happy with the results here. Um, in the future, I'm definitely going to play around with getting some sort of uh, management out of this. So there's that console port. There's a USB port. We have the network card in there. I definitely want to figure out how I can interface with this and maybe um, set some of the Raspberry Pis that are powered off of this that aren't really being used to power off um, when we detect a power outage. I think that would be really cool. Uh, but for now, this is a really good start. It kind of makes me want to buy more of these APC units. Um, yeah, excited to hear if anybody else is doing something similar. Does anybody else have any secondhand UPSs they'd recommend? I've been hearing good things about brands like Triplight and Eaton. 
Um, APC seems pretty solid, but I know that they're kind of going out of favor. Um, but yeah, I think that with this success, I'd be really excited to get a lot more UPSs deployed in various places around the house um, and just have that peace of mind that things will kind of keep going when the power goes out. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I'll uh, be back with another video with some updates soon. Uh, but until then, I hope you learned that it's pretty easy to just buy one of these secondhand and get some new batteries thrown in there. So hope you enjoyed this. See you again.